My name is Mehmet Kızılay. I'm, I'm a designer and a director. Um, I'm based in Istanbul and London. And I, I have always been one of those designers who, is, who used to be very intimidated by 3D. Like 2D was just okay. I didn't want the, the complexity, you know, I didn't want to go into like steep learning curves of 3D animation softwares and everything. It was quite a hassle for me. And I did, um, what I started, how I started th doing these things is actually I used to do illustrations. And as you can see, I just needed cubes, some good shading, and some perspective. So I needed to do, like, get things done quickly in a 3D software, get out of there quickly, and go to my comfort zone, which is 2D. And, well, Cinema 4D came in really handy at first time when I met it, actually. And... Um, the more I got used to 3D stuff, the more I used to, the, got used to liking complicated things. So basically I started doing illustrations and animations for myself and the, the world of 3D actually became incredibly um, compelling, if you, if you will. And, and things went on and now I do own a studio called Kraken. Uh, again, based in London and Istanbul, we're a bunch of people, very few people, people uh, who are really like um, excited to do great, beautiful things. We do, we do many things in terms of motion design. We do channel brandings, we do TV ads, um, we do short films, we do projection mappings, we do main titles for film and TV, and we had privilege of, to, to, of working with global brands such as HBO and FX Network. And we're also doing a little local stuff in Istanbul, uh, like TV ads for major TV and t TV channels. And we have also branded a lot of like um, national TV channels. And yeah, but our motto, my motto have, hasn't changed since like the beginning of my 3D adventure. I didn't like complex things. And, and actually your pipeline doesn't have to be complex. And this would be actually music to my ears when somebody told me when I just first started this profession. But I can confidently say that right now, your pipeline doesn't have to be technically complex. So um, before I explain why, maybe I should just show you our showreel, as it's the tradition around here. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So this was our work in one and a half minutes. And yes, um, back to our motto, simple stuff, which can be accepted by the industry. So, oops, yeah. So in order to prove my point of simplicity, I would like to talk some of the projects that I've been doing uh, recently. And one of them is going to be NEF 39. And um, this was a really tight deadline project. We had only 15 days. 
but the client wanted really complex stuff and and you wouldn't believe actually well you will believe when you see them but um, it's it's uh, we, we just like did the whole thing with quick tips basically and most of the objects have only like you know two keyframes each so um, well, um, Nef is uh, a construction and real estate company in Turkey, one of the major ones, and they have this success story, and they they were able to solve a whole project of houses in two hours, and basically they were they, the the agency came up with the idea that they can do many things in two hours, like having a meal, going to a game, and you know maybe like um, uh, go to see a movie and everything. So they wanted to show off with the success story because they just like sell the whole project in two hours. And the idea was um, putting the activities inside a watch so that you can like, you know, see like the game and the meal and everything inside the guts, inside the cogs of the watch itself. And it was, uh, well, we jump right into it because it's like, you know, it's, you know, it's always a fetish for a 3D artist to model and animate insides of a, of a watch because it looks really good with shiny materials and everything. And so we jumped right into it and we started researching. And what we did was we had to model like, we had to model like a, like a complex watch and we started you know, uh, researching, doing R&D on how it's supposed to work, why it's supposed to move like that, what kind of materials are used in the jewelry, silver, steel, and everything. And we learned a lot of things, actually. And we, we quite basically sold how it should be looking. Yeah, we learned everything, but we basically followed none of the things that we learned. <laughs> So we basically animated everything randomly, and there was a lot of play a lot of pieces to animate, and then there were a lot of loops to make. We were, we were able to implement the activities inside. You can see like a soccer game ball there. You can like a nice turkey meal maybe, you know, and a cinema projector. And all we did was put two keyframes in every single object, and basically. If you have a look at the look at the curve editor, we just animated it once and then looped them. This is a really, really nice feature of the timeline. If you can just look at the functions, track after, and if you just like, if you repeat after what you have animated, you you have basically rules r loops, and you you can like animate stuff with one keyframe and looping for the whole sequence of your of your timeline. Yeah, it was very simple. Sold really quickly, uh, but what we really wanted was, you know, because we we had achieved like a moving uh, clock, and we had all the things that the client needed inside. But I wanted this to be a more glamorous, like revealing uh, video, and I I would like it to be like a, in that Transformers opening title, you know, like the me mechanisms re revealing underneath other mechanisms and stuff. And since Neff was a premium brand and this would look r quite good on their, on their um, film, basically. So I thought I should, well, I, I knew I was gambling for a 15-day deadline, actually. But still, I did wanted to do that. So I, I had to, again, solve it simply. So we started like modeling really simple stuff, such as this little piece here. Very simple shape like this one. This is basically three extrusions and three screws, screw models. And the objects have like two rotation keyframes on each, and they're all in inside a hierarchy. There's there's not even rigging here. We didn't even rig this. And what we did was, was basically put this inside a cloner like this. And the shape has to be radial, of course. So we just like made it into a radial cloner in XZ plane didn't fix the clone and we needed almost 60 pieces it's gonna be a small slow one I'll just show you with the fewer ones and I just put one step effector to the timing there we go not the scale but the time offset yep so basically 25 and this like small mechanism opening revealing itself one by one and just to show you the whole thing I'll just go back to my presentation so what we achieved was something like this 
There we go. So what I did was simple stuff moving beautifully like this one. And if I, th I thought if I just combine many things like this, simply achieved uh, animations, I thought I would just go, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be just fine. So, kept on designing. Another one would be this particular mechanism. It's like a radial thing. And if I just like close all the cloners and effectors, this is basically just similar to the other one. A couple of shapes. You know, I just like, uh, I will close the other ones for you to see the ones actually we need. So basically, one small hierarchy without rigging, small hierarchy of objects of one another. You can see the hierarchy found there. And simple rotation keyframes on each one. So if you basically put these in order, you're going to have something like this at the end. Very simple, very humble. And if you just like clone them radially, there we go. So it is a little bit of a heavy scene too. I'll just show you what the, 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 the final result here too. Yeah. So I kept designing these simple animations on and on. And what I finally achieved was, you know, these couple of animations, which will eventually reveal the animation of my watch. And when I combined them in one scene, I was able to have this mechanism of this abstract watch, abstract clock at the end. And basically, it's, it's still not really exciting. Uh, we had this phase of look and feel, of course. We, we used Octane Render. And this is, this is one of the advantages of Cinema 4D, I guess. When you have a huge community, your third-party plugins are really well supported. So Octane Render is really well supported in, in Cinema 4D. And we, like, uh, we use it all, all in our pipeline. And this is a very simple scene, too. I would actually, if, if I had time, I would like more, like, put some surface reflections and everything, no good texturing. But we basically have three textures here, one, s one silver, one golden, and one, uh, well, one jewelry for, for the, one specular for the jewelry. Very simple setup, only, probably only one HDRI or, or three, three, po three point lighting. And when we just like combined all these simple stuff, simple look and feel, simple animation, simple modeling, uh, we had fairly complex animation, if you, if you have a look. Have you ever thought about what you can fit into two hours. Perhaps watching a movie with your family. How about a soccer game? Or a nice dinner? While you were busy doing these things, we completed the sale of all units at NEF 39 in just two hours. Thank you for the interest you have shown. So yeah, this was we the final product. You Thank you very much. Project. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, okay, I'll just stop this one. Yeah, well, this kind of this was, this was kind of a proof of concept for us that, that if you just combine beautiful things, chaos doesn't have to be actual chaos. You can create beautiful things out of chaos, probably a little too philosophical, I know, but still. Um, the next project I'll, I'll be talking about um, HBO Silicon Valley. And this is another work that actually proves the point of um, creating chaos out of simple things is sometimes beautiful. And, and this was actually, uh, you know, one of the major networks in the world, um, HBO, and it, it was like nominated for an Emmy Award. Nominated just not one, but still. And you wouldn't believe how simple everything was inside the animation and the process. And we were so lucky to work with Yuko, the UN company. And Los Angeles-based studio, legendary studio, have who have done a lot of really good style uh, work uh, for the for the film and television worldwide, especially in America, and and they had this. Um, well, if you're familiar with the show, uh, it's created by Mike Judge, one of the legends in comedy and television, like creator of Beavis and Butthead and Office Space and some stuff like that. And they were like, he was he was also an IT person, you know, and he was like. Um, doing this show telling the story of the Silicon Valley and and he didn't even want a title at first because you know 
uh, but HBO, you know, is known for the good titles they've been producing for their shows, and you know, they eventually decided probably having a title for them. And the idea was um, telling the story of Silicon Valley, which in other in other name, also known as um, Palo Alto area, and they they wanted to show the hectic environment, a lot of company corporates, you know, incubators like like Steve Jobs had before and they wanted this really hectic environment of Silicon Valley and Palo Alto and they wanted the image to be isometric and they had this reference uh, which uh, like a German duo if you if you're familiar with their work eBoy they're incredibly talented and very like detailed pixel art posters and they the, the client wanted something like this and we only had one and a half months and I did know that eBoy did their pieces in like six months a piece so the client wanted this look and they wanted moving. So challenge was there, but we were up to it. But we had to be really like problem solvers and we had to be really quick and everything has to like work really simple. So again, and I'll just show a little bit more of the eBoy work if you're not familiar with it. You can just like get lost in these. I have like a huge print in my office and I still see new details after two years. So incredible. Okay. Um, yeah, but we had to pitch for the project f first, and uh, Yuko also uh, already had their ideas of titles and everything. They started like modeling a got nice, um, a nice uh, structure of the frames. They had this title uh, idea, and I also had like the isometric projects before I did. I showed them as references. They liked them, and I started modeling because I had the privilege to uh, watch some of the pilots, like two two episodes, two first episodes, the the show before it was aired. So I knew that there was a there was a fantasy tech giant called Holy, and they had this building. I modeled that. I knew the characters, and they were already like illustrated by Yuko. Uh, so I just like basically extruded them, <laughs> the the, uh, the the AI uh, actually files. And in in the episodes, there was like this shuttle car for Holy, where the main character, but the protagonist, used to like bump up to his friends and everything. We just modeled them, and we did this small animatic, if you will of telling the story and this was basically the Richard main character going to work and stumbling upon his friends you know going to like riding a tandem bicycle riding their tandem bicycle to the holy building and then finally we see the title a very rough very early sketch of the title and it was gonna you know evolve into something completely different at the end um, okay and we did some trials what if we just like you know switch between isometric and perspective views you know it's always a good idea to you know change these kind of because since isometric view is a very irregular kind of site it's like nice to like have this transition and we thought maybe maybe Richard would be working in the Silicon Valley building the title itself so we made like you know trials on that too also uh, we thought we could also use the features of the isometric view itself you know, since you don't have perspective in iso isometric view, the the objects do don't get like smaller as you go further. So uh, this is this is fun actually. I just I might even though this wasn't used, I can show a little bit of what we were thinking. So as you can see, we have like cubes scaling up and moving up and down here. You know, and if you just like go among them, it's basically it, it looks like an installation, like uh, you know, urban furniture and something like that. But if you just kindly align the camera accordingly, you just barely start seeing the Silicon Valley title. And if you look through the camera, you basically have a isometric font. So we thought this might, you know, work as a title reveal for for the project, and we could just like transition between um, the perspective view and the isometric view. And it didn't like. It didn't. It didn't end up being used anyway. So, story of our lives. <laughs> so, I have this folder called "Rejected," and one of my, one of my all of my maybe favorite scenes are there. But still, you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Uh, so, back to the project. And this was actually what I have shown was enough for the client to give the project to us. So, we started the actual design. So we were one of those lucky studios who were who were actually achieved the you know um, advantage of producing a title because it's all pitching you know so we were lucky to be the reproducing the thing so I started where I left so 
initial designs were quite quite similar to the pitching frames that I had, and I just started filling the streets with with a lot of stuff. But I was all over the place because I didn't know what to put there. You know, th there were a lot of info and a lot of people. You know, all the details. I don't know why, but there's a pooping robot there. You know, there's a riot which is streamed by Ustream, which was really popular back then. And you know, um, the show was supposed to be an adult show, so there were rooftop parties. You know, people have drank too much. You know, ladies in bikinis playing Twister. You know, inside pools and hot tubs and everything. So we just like had fun. You know, and the final city was something like this. As you can see, like there are many logos of the tech companies there, and they're like guerrilla stuff. You know, like um, Linux guys doing graffiti on my pool building and stuff. So it's like small jokes from me you know and um, and well i was i was i was a turkish guy from in istanbul doing remote work for the for the los angeles studio about a los angeles um themed show so culturally i was not really like you know well educated so i was putting nintendo and atari like japanese brands to a silicon valley show which is quite irrelevant but you know so they like kind of send me pictures of basically streets and street lights and this is California this is how it's supposed to look and then um, what they said about this particular frame was it was too technological you know you know it, this is not like the real world and we want something realistic so I just like turned into a little bit like mediocre buildings and um, also we had to think about the animation so they wanted to show the transition from the residential structure of Palo Alto which used to be quite residential area to the, the tech capital of the world, basically. And what we wanted to do is like, uh, we, should, we thought we should like model residential neighborhoods and flip every neighborhood into, into basically like a um, huge building tech company. So we would just reveal uh, the bu buildings from underneath the neighborhoods by just flipping the neighborhoods. And yes, and this was the final, I thought it was the final design actually. And, and I just presented this and they were okay with the design I mean they kind of liked it but they they told me that this isn't this isn't California still and this can be maybe New York okay because like the high-rise building and smoke and, and stuff but this is this is definitely not New York and not not uh, California so we, we wanted more green and wider streets you know shorter buildings and everything so we were kind of back to square one because Still, we had you know a lot of empty areas, and I had to fill the wide uh, roads and everything. And I was bargaining with the client, you know, maybe, maybe if I could like lower the camera and like let the buildings block each other, maybe I can have that hectic feeling and environment. But it was not happening. We had more objects inside. So, so what? How we solved this was we made a bigger map overnight. So. It was it was kind of hard work, but in and and you can see some of the buildings are um, realistically modeled, like the Facebook building, Google campus, and Apple campus was actually being built there. So, so basically, we were able to finish it before them. And um, SAP building and Intel building, they were all modeled uh, looking at the original ones. And it's, it's crazy doing this overnight, but yeah, we, need, we needed that. And by the time, well, this was actually approved finally. So this is the design that they will show, they will use in the in the in the show. And we were relieved, but the idea of the animation changed on the way. And the flipping idea, they didn't like it. So the animation turned out to be a time lapse. So we were terrified actually because. Um, now, right now, we do have a lot of good examples of, of time-lapse technique replicated in 3D, but then we didn't have many. So only references that we had was were the, the videos themselves. So we start like looking at the videos, how they move, how we achieve this like you know stop motion and time-lapse kind of animation, and how we just reveal the Silicon Valley title. First, we just like uh, designed a style frame, like a construction kind of. Um, image of the Silicon Valley title and then we started doing R&D for the for the animation and we had you know we had to solve it really really you know practically so I'll show you some really easy examples ah 
there it is. So there's this is this is like um, this is like the hundreds of the one of the hundreds of the uh, objects that were that were animated inside the title, and very simple animation of a, of a helicopter. And in, this is quite smooth now, and this is nothing like time lapse or stop motion at the moment, and very easy. Some very easy turnout would be. Um, What I would do is just bake the object. Now I have a baked version of my object. Maybe I will just close the previous one and stop the animation for a while. Select all my keyframes, squeeze them in the timeline. So Cinema 4D just basically does it for you and reopen it. Right now we have, st we still have keyframes, but they're a little bit jagged right now. So if I go to the curve view, you know, select everything that we have and do it in step interpolation, what we have achieved is basically more of a time lapse and stop motion looking animation. Very, very easy, you know, technique, but you have to solve these kinds of problems when you have you know, a tight deadline. Yeah? And if you just compare both the same animation, one is look, looks jagged, the other one is smooth. There we go. And there were many other techniques that we did with Sword. And this actually how we achieved uh, the look on the, on the lighting. Oops, sorry. Yeah, this is how we animated the lights, actually. We just like uh, animated it in one day, one round, and like squeeze the keyframes, open them up, step interpolation, there you go. And for the Silicon Valley building, I'll just, just go back to the references maybe here. And this one, can you see like the cranes moving and you see the first, you, you, you first see the metal construction, steel construction, and the concrete follows up. So we had to solve this in a way. And what we came up with is, Quite brilliant, actually. Actually, let me show you. Uh, this is, yeah. So basically, we have one steel construction. Oops, sorry. And we have one concrete construction without the without the steel. There we go. So what we did was actually basically we have we have only uh, we, we we put all the floors inside the fracture object, you know every fro floor is one object inside the fracture, and uh, since they're in the fracture object we could like use effectors on them, and there are three plane effectors here, basically switching the layers on and off. So with with two keyframes, starting from here. You see, you see first the construction, then the concrete, steel work, then the concrete, steel work, the concrete. Just basically animate the plane effectors with two keyframes, and you have a time lapse Silicon building, Silicon Valley building animated. So I'll just show you the final result for you to have an idea. So if you apply everything to the single letters, it's much more organic and looks like time lapse C probably. <coughs> Maybe I can show how we sold um, animating the cranes too. Yep, there we have a crane moving right here. This looks easy already, but still, I'll just try to show how we achieved that. Oops. Select, delete all the keyframes. What I did was, was basically, I, I have this moving part and I had the position itself, yeah? I just select two of them, put a keyframe there and turn on automat automat automatic keyframing. So what we did was basically just go, on, go along the timeline, move a little bit, 
go further, move, very basic movements, just right and left. And Cinema 40 is creating the frames, uh, key frames for me. And then go back, maybe choose the rotating parts, rotate, go along, oops, rotate, go along, rotate. You understand what I'm doing. So, very simple. Just a solution for the whole thing. And when you basically do that trick again that we did before, select everything. Oops, yeah. See everything right here. And if you just use the step interpolation. There we have our time lapse animation again. Same solution, a little bit different, you know. Uh, another way we came around, we come around with the thing was I had to the same way animated with ladies are like upside down right now, <laughs> sorry. But if you just like put them inside a cloner, what what I did basically was animate the count so that they appear like in, in twos and threes and stuff and animate the random effector seed there we have so they appear in random places with random um, rotations and they're like it's a time-lapse ongoing construction machinery kind of scene yeah at one point actually client wanted us to you know make a plane go over the scene so that we can see the shadow over the over the city and as you can see we are just like started animating stuff you know the google building is revealing there and the google campus is like you know building up we see napster balloon going down and you know the youtube by youtube is bought by google achieved by google and it gets bigger when it's bought by google and everything so it's 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 all like a, you know when i when i actually try to tell what's happening inside the frame i'm like a you know um, football game announcer, you know, it's like a lot of things happening there. And this one basically, one of the work in progress is quite closer to the end. And you can see many of the aspects, many of the objects animated, and we, we are basically revealed the Silicon Valley building. But we were making some really major mistake here because we didn't feel like this was looking like a time lapse animation. And, and being inside the project so long, you just like missed sometimes the most uh, obvious things and this was actually the time itself you know this is only one day being animated here you can see the shadows going one part to the other until the end of the another video so but but we didn't need one day we need days so we had to animate much more rapidly and also the cars the cars they look like a very badly executed stop motion animation they have to be like much much more hectic animation there so when you just like um, when we completed and revised all our mistakes we were able to achieve something like this and this was the final animation there you go okay A lot of details there. Maybe, maybe what you'd like to w see it one more time. I don't know. I'll, I'll play it anyway. <laughs> and you can see the cranes. You can see the bulldozers that I've shown you there. It's all fun. And it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a huge challenge for us, but it was a lot of fun. And this project was, as I've said before, nominated for an Emmy Award. And this is from my Instagram, from where I sit. It was a huge achievement for a really small studio in Istanbul for us. But something bigger happened, actually. And we were, we were saluted by Simpsons, so Springfield instead of Silicon Valley. And I think this was like a bigger achievement than the nomination for me because like uh, I am, I'm a huge fan of Simpsons and seeing my work and seeing them like animate my stuff in their style is really priceless actually. So yeah, thank you very much for listening to me today.